Before we're born into this world, each of us spends about nine months in a watery environment. But after we're born, we can no longer stay in the water for so long. All we can endure is 10 days, and then... In November 2002, a guy named Tim Yarrow set a world record. To get a mention in the Guinness World Records, he dived into a small pool in a mall in Johannesburg. Tim took scuba gear and a special tube for eating with him because he spent 240 hours underwater. 10 days. At first glance, it seems like there's nothing special about that. Sitting underwater's no big deal. He didn't even have to hold his breath. Turns out water can be a real challenge. In Tim's own words, the first three days were hell. Absolute hell. That's probably because the uncomfortable diving mask ruined his sleep these days. Or maybe the whole point is what water can do to a human body. Check out Tim's fingers. Look at what they've become. Water made them that way. Only water, nothing else. Tim was lucky he was examined by a doctor. The whole challenge was always supervised. And still, his fingers looked awful. As if they didn't belong to a live human being. Experts also argue that staying underwater for 10 days could lead to worse, completely unforeseen circumstances. Most likely, if a person stays underwater for a very long time, their skin will break down. Basically, water simply destroys our skin. Yes, ordinary water. It all starts with the skin wrinkling. You've probably noticed this effect, and it has a scientific explanation. The reason our hands and feet look like this is that the surface of the skin is covered in dead keratin cells. They absorb water faster than any other cells. And since there's a layer of the same, but living cells beneath, the dead ones simply puff up and eventually wrinkle. But even scientists don't have a clue what happens next. Steve and I tried to find information about this, but it seems like there isn't any reliable scientific research so far. Correct me if I'm wrong. Though one thing is certain, human skin begins to break down after being immersed in water for several days. You'll suffer open sores, fungal and bacterial infections would enter your body, infecting it even if the water is perfectly sterile. By the way, among other things, water pressure reduces blood circulation to your extremities and makes breathing difficult. Water simply kills. But did nature really design it that way? After all, about 71% of the Earth's surface is water covered. Couldn't nature just, I don't know, give people immunity? Actually, the ability of the skin to wrinkle is a gift from evolution. It only takes five minutes for the water to trigger this strange reaction in our body, which is why many scientists call wrinkled fingers an adaptation. Fingers with wrinkles and bumps ensure, let's say, a better grip. These very wrinkles divert water away from the fingers and toes, allowing primates, more precisely humans and macaques, to get a better grip on stuff. In 2013, British neuroscientists even conducted a study where 20 people had to move 45 different objects. In some cases, the items were dry and the subject's fingers were smooth or wrinkled. In others, objects were immersed in water. The scientists found that participants with wrinkled fingers moved underwater objects faster. At the same time, they moved dry objects at the same speed as other participants. That is, this feature can really count as a gift from evolution. Though in a few hours, this gift turns into a curse. Specialists from Binghamton University in New York examined samples of the stratum corneum, that is the outer layer of human skin, from people 27 to 87 years old. 12 hours after immersion, the skin loses its plasticity due to a reduced ability to hold water. Water also depletes lipids, interferes with natural moisturizing processes. But these are all general statements, so I was more interested in other studies. One of them showed that exposure to water for roughly six days leads to what doctors call acute dermatitis. That looks nasty. Google it at your own risk. According to another study, prolonged immersion in water for seven days causes skin peeling. But here's what's interesting. Immersing the skin in water at lower temperatures reduces this effect. However, cold water has other cons, which I'll cover later. Because you know what could be worse than long exposure to the water? Long exposure to salt water. In 2018, Ross Edgley finished what he called the Great British Swim. He swam around the UK in 157 days. Of course, he needed to rest, consume a huge amount of calories, and get checked by experts. The water still did its job. The wetsuit got his neck chafed, but his tongue suffered the worst. Only 100 miles into the swim, for comparison, the whole trek was 1,792 miles, 
It became difficult for Ross to speak, eat, and even just swallow due to the constant exposure to seawater. Because, I have to warn you, this looks gross. I hope you're not having a snack right now. The chunks of his tongue started to fall off. Imagine you wake up in the morning to find pieces of your own tongue on your pillow. Ooh, that's what salt water can do. And that's in just a few days, given that Ross alternated between six hours of swimming and six hours of rest. Can human skin become any more vulnerable? Yes, it can. This happens with age. Until you get to 70 years old, nothing special happens. That is, the skin, of course, changes and ages, but this is not so critical. But after you turn 70, according to research, the skin quickly becomes brittle. The likelihood that it'll rupture or tear is much higher compared to younger people. Unfortunately, the study doesn't yet answer the question, why is this happening? Perhaps the reason simply lies in the body wearing over time. But if you think that only immersion in water can cause unexpected harm to the human body, damaging its skin, then you simply haven't heard how drops of cold water can drive you mad. Back in the 15th or 16th centuries, this was the way murderers were punished in some countries. And if you know the details, it becomes clear how severe this punishment was. It's pretty simple. Cold water is slowly dripped onto the scalp, forehead, or face of the perpetrator for a prolonged period of time. The pattern of the drops is irregular. That is, it's simply impossible to anticipate them. Add to this a sharp cold sensation, which causes even more anxiety when a person tries to anticipate the next drop. As a result, the perpetrator simply experiences a psychotic break. During a psychotic episode, people experience delusions, hallucinations, and losing touch with reality. And it takes only 20 hours to induce this state. 20 hours of continuous, irregular dripping. I didn't learn this from old documents, the authors of which could make this all up. The Mythbusters, as well as the creators of the Mindfield series, tested the effectiveness of this method. I think you can take their word for it. You don't have to perform such an experiment on your own. No, seriously, don't. Let's go back to what I said about cold water before. The lower the temperature, the less harmful it is to human skin. Great news. But this is where hypothermia comes into play. It happens when the body can't produce enough heat to make up for the heat it's losing. Imagine a situation when the man suddenly ends up in, say, somewhere in a cold sea. When a human body is placed in frigid water, a strange reaction called the cold shock response occurs. You feel the urge to breathe very quickly and deeply, which means you risk swallowing very cold water and dying. The good news is that this state passes fairly quickly. The bad news? It gets way worse after. Usually, a person can survive in water that's 41 degrees Fahrenheit for 10, 15, or even 20 minutes before their muscles get weak. After that, they lose coordination and strength because the blood flows from the extremities towards the center of the body and it becomes almost impossible to control them. Of course, there are many factors that determine how fast a person submerged in water cools. Obese people who have a lot of soft tissue that provides better insulation are likely to last longer than lanky ones. It's equally important what part of the body stays underwater. It's much faster to freeze in cold water than in just cold air. The deeper you are, the faster hypothermia will occur. You may have already thought about the passengers of the Titanic, but I have a more recent example. This is a story with a happy ending. In January 2009, US Airways Flight 1549 collided with a flock of geese and crash-landed in the Hudson River. Passengers and crew members abandoned the plane and waited for evacuation in the water, the temperature of which was just 41 degrees Fahrenheit. Fortunately, help arrived very quickly. This story inspired the movie Sully. Check it out if you haven't seen it. To sum it up, water can kill you by damaging your skin, water can drive you crazy, water can lower your body temperature and drown you. But all this seems to be clear, expected, even logical. Unlike water poisoning, and no, I don't mean water with some dangerous chemicals, here's a fact. Drinking too much regular drinking water can kill you. Yes, water is essential for life, well-being, and lack of it leads to terrible consequences, but this is exactly the case when a lot doesn't mean good. 
In 2007, 28-year-old Jennifer Strange drank about 1.6 gallons of water in three hours for a contest. And then she died from water intoxication. And this is just one of many sad examples. At this point, I, as a person who, well, drinks quite a lot of water, felt anxious. Maybe death is upon me. How do you know when something's going wrong? Common symptoms are headache, nausea, or vomiting, drowsiness, cramps, and muscle weakness. If you drink a lot of water and feel something like this, it's better to consult a doctor ASAP. While waiting for help, some experts recommend strengthening your body with salty snacks. Who could expect such food could be useful? And no, there isn't a specific amount of water that would always lead to life-threatening water poisoning. Instead, better think about the amount of water a person drinks per hour. The kidneys of a healthy adult can, let's say, filter 5.3 to 7.4 gallons of water every day, but they can only handle 0.25 gallons every hour. So more than 0.25 gallons of fluid per hour is a problem for the kidneys. For the elderly and kids, the amount should be even lower because their kidneys aren't working as efficiently. It'd seem what could be weirder than water poisoning? Well, being allergic to water. I'll say right away, most often, people with this condition can drink, but any exposure of skin to water causes an allergic reaction. The scientific name for this rare condition is aquagenic urticaria. And it doesn't matter what kind of liquid a person gets exposed to. Tap water, rain, sweat, tears, saliva, the reaction will be the same. Small blisters that itch and disappear in about half an hour. Well, if you remove the water, of course. <sighs> As is often the case with rare diseases, aquagena urticaria is poorly studied. Scientists don't know much about it or how to treat it. It just exists. Apparently, people have to somehow cope with it on their own. See you later.